So, first of all, God. One of my theological heroes is Herbert McCabe. He was an English Dominican, died just about 10 years ago. McCabe often engaged uh, atheists in dialogue publicly. He always said, I want the atheist to speak first. So the atheist would lay out his position in great detail. McCabe would invariably respond by saying, I completely agree with you. I say, how come? How come? He wasn't just being flip. Almost invariably, what atheists deny, McCabe would deny too. I would deny too. Because atheists, and this is true of the Hitchens and Dawkins and all the new atheists that I read today, they don't know what we mean when we say the word God. I'll give you an example now. Uh, this came, I think, from Dawkins originally, but it's in all his disciples. I read it almost every day. You believers believe in the flying spaghetti monster. Have you heard that little phrase? They got it from Dawkins. The idea is as wild and unlikely and without evidence is the flying spaghetti monster, so as wild and fantastical and without evidence is God. In fact, I saw just the other day, you know how some cars had the little uh, fish symbol for Christianity? And then some people put the Darwin symbol. I saw a flying spaghetti monster one, no kidding. A little image of, the, of, a, of a figure of spaghetti and these eyes and so on. Another one you hear a lot is, oh, it's so nice that you believe in your nice invisible friend. <laughs> That's God, my little invisible friend. Another one you hear a lot, also from Dawkins, is, oh, it's so nice you can believe in your sky fairy. So, sky fairy, invisible friend, flying spaghetti monster. That's what God is. God's as likely as any of those three wild fantasies. I want to take you back to the, um, a book that had a huge impact on me when I was a kid. The Seven Story Mountain of Thomas Merton, the great uh, Catholic spiritual writer. Merton was a kind of typical modern as a young man. Didn't believe in God. He said, I thought that God was a noisy mythological creature. That's a line from the Seven Story Mountain. Ah, flying spaghetti monster, invisible friend, sky fairy, a noisy mythological being. But then Merton one day was walking down Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. He came to the Scribner's bookstore and he saw on the window a book called The Spirit of Medieval Philosophy by the French philosopher Etienne Gilson. He picked up the book and he read it. And what he found was this richly intellectual approach to God that you can find in medieval philosophy. What he found was this. God, for the great medieval Catholic tradition, is not ens sumum. That means highest being. Rather, God is, and here's Thomas Aquinas' phrase, God is ipsum esse subsistence. That means the sheer act of to be itself. God is not one being among many. In fact, Thomas says, God is not in any genus, not even the genus of being. It's a fascinating little remark, isn't it? This thing is in the genus of podium. I'm in the genus of humanity, so are you. God is not in any genus, even the genus of being. You see what that means? He's not the biggest thing around. He's not the biggest being among many. God is the sheer act of to be itself. When Moses asked for God's name in Exodus 3.14, when they asked me, who sent you, what should I tell them? Remember God's great answer. I am who I am. In some ways, his answer is, stop asking me stupid questions. Because <laughs> you see what he's asking. Which one are you? There are a lot of gods, right? The god of this place or that, the god of the mountain, god of the river, god of the Egyptians. Which one are you? God's not in a genus. To be God is to be to be. That's a line from David Burrell, the philosopher at Notre Dame. To be me is to be a human being. To be this is to be a podium. To, this is to be a microphone. To be God is to be to be. Now you say, well, that's a nice abstraction, but what does that mean? Well, see, it means everything. Because it means God is not competitive with the world. See, friends, lurking behind so much of the atheist critique, and this goes back to Feuerbach and Freud and Marx and Sartre and everybody else, 
is the view that somehow God has got to be eliminated if we are to be fully ourselves. Sartre put it just that way, didn't he? If God exists, he said, I cannot be free. But I am free. Therefore, God does not exist. Feuerbach, the founder of modern atheism, said, the no to God is the yes to man. You see how the new atheists are picking right up on that. But you see what's behind that view, that God and the world are competitive one to the other. The God who's not a being, but the sheer act of being itself, is not my competitor, but rather what? The one in whom I find my deepest freedom. Do you see how the God who is to be itself is the very ground of my existence? And therefore the surrender to that God is the discovery of who I am. And that's why St. Irenaeus can say over and against Jean Paul Sartre, the glory of God is a human being fully alive. Now, can I suggest to you, you could, you could lose almost all the literature of Christianity, but keep that one line, you got the heart of it. The glory of God is a human being fully alive. That's the kind of relationship that obtains between us and ipsum esse, to be itself. So I say to the atheists a lot, I'll be happy to have a conversation with you, but we got to be clear on what we do and don't mean by God. What you deny, some fantastic supreme being in the world, I deny that too. There's no evidence for such a thing. Remember the, uh, some are old enough in the room to remember the Russian cosmonaut going up into the, into the heavens in the 1950s. I went up there into the heavens, I looked around, and there's no God. Remember? No flying spaghetti monster, no invisible friend. Well, I mean, anybody trained in the Bible would know. He was speaking so much nonsense, right? As high as the heavens are above the earth, so higher are my thoughts above your thoughts, my ways above your ways. There's an infinite qualitative difference between God and the world. That's because God is not a thing in the world. Something I come across a lot on the YouTube forums is people say, there's no evidence for God. Well, what do you want? Some physical trace? What are you looking for? Something you can find under a microscope? You can do an experiment on it? There's no evidence for the architect of this room. Well, yeah, he's not in the room anywhere, but yet everything in this room reflects the architect of it, doesn't it? The architect can be discerned in every nook and cranny of this room, though he or she is not an item in the room. Ah, so it goes with God. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. Yes, indeed. Every nook and cranny of creation speaks, and I'll come back to this, speaks of the great mind of God. But yet God is not a thing in the world. The true God, ipsum esse. By the way, there's, there's Thomas Aquinas. Good, I'll give you the uh, Paul Tillich version of that, the Protestant version. Tillich says God is not ein seiende, a being, but sein selbst, being itself. Same idea. Same idea. You see, they're both rooted in the great Exodus revelation. I am who I am. So clarity about God is extremely important as we engage in the culture conversation.